Welcome everybody for the after lunch uh, presentation and session. So next we are uh, going to have a inter-process uh, communication uh, talk. Well, uh, we'll learn about the uh, fork system call as I uh, read <laughs> from the uh, description. Um, no, just joking. Um, we, have to, uh, we are here something about uh, about the parenting process, and I'm very glad we have Perret here as a speaker. So please give him a warm round of applause. Hi. So if you were expecting some kind of multi-threading talk, whatever, you are in the wrong place. Um, this is me, and I'm going to talk about basically parenting processes or yeah, you know, because most of us have forks these days. I'm Pere, I'm a software engineer since ever. Um, been working in databases, data analytics platforms since, yeah, since the very beginning of my career. Used to do the graph debrum at FOSDEM. Probably most of you know FOSDEM. It's kind of the big brother of this conference. Uh, if you don't know about it, you should go to Belgium, first weekend of February. It's been amazing. I mean, it's the best conference ever with respect to Froscon, that it's also very good, uh, yeah. And obviously, I'm not just coding all the time. I like to enjoy my life, you know, uh, with my kids, with my wife, TV movies, series. I used to do a lot of running before when I got more time. Um, yeah, that's basically me. So before I start, I kind of always do that kind of thing. Uh, I come from Spain. I come actually from Barcelona and I've been told by many of my German friends I'm the fastest speaker they ever met. So if, as Leslie said once to me, uh, if I speak too fast, just do, not do something like slow down, slow down, and I will slow down. Um, yeah. Second disclaimer is we are going to enter a very sensitive topic. Um, everything that involves kids uh, brings Extremely strong opinions. Um, this for me is like religion, sports, you know. Everyone has an opinion and is very extremely vocal about it. This talk includes my personal experiences, opinions, ideas, and some numbers that might not match 100% of the reality. So welcome to the bias. <laughs> um, we are going to be talking basically about uh, what is software engineering today and what are we doing at work every day. I'm um, going to provide a few numbers about what actually parenting and having child means. Um, some of them come out of a poll that I made a few weeks ago, so our contributions mostly from the community. Um, also sharing, one of the things that really worried me the most is about society expectations. Things that we do uh, because other ones, others expect us to do it. Um, a bit of talking about what startups and company culture means and do for us, and a few tips about what we can do and should do to avoid it. So starting about what software engineering or software in general means for us today, basically we find software everywhere. We find software from our refrigerator, we find software in our computers, in the internet, etc. So a lot of what we do have a strong impact to what other people is, is actually feeling and doing every day. Um, and for all, all, all of us, software is a passion. It's a passion. Um, I've been doing with computers since I was a small child, dealing with a CPC 128, you know, with a cassette and all these things there, and while my brothers were playing fo football on the street. And most of you might think that this probably sad, but for me, it was super fun. Um, yeah, so it's a passion, and it's, it's what we do as a job is our hobby. Um, one thing that we also find in, in our industry is change. Things change extremely fast and change every day. So we are kind of required to, to be learning and constantly learning and, and, and improving ourselves every day. So what we just learned at the university, 10 years after, doesn't mean anything. Because, you know, when I was at the university, Agile was starting, 
Now Agile is here, and we even have several flavors of it. Um, yeah, so we really need to keep up learning everything. There is also one idea that I strongly hate. It looks like that we have to be programming at work, and we have to be programming after work, because we should have a portfolio somehow, because when we face a job advertising, they tell us, what do you do? Do you have a Git profile? And I find this extremely complicated because, especially for me, as a human being, I don't just enjoy programming at, you know, eight hours a day. I like, I used to go running, I like to spend time with my kids, I like to play games, etc. So this makes me um, sometimes uh, the less appealing candidate for some jobs because I don't have an awesome uh, portfolio. So, but this is how it works, more or less. You have to live your programming life from work, after work, etc. Yeah, another important stuff that happens in our job or as software engineers these days is just the distinction between what we call us. We call us developers. We call us engineers. Do we think that our job is is craft or is engineering job? Because this gives to come to, to really different company uh, company cultures uh, to have. So. I like to see that versus you know, the difference between alchemy and end science. More stuff around what we do every day. Um, our job is highly rewarding, especially when we fix issues, or it is to me, at least. When we fix something and make something work, it's awesome. I mean, unless this feeling is something that I like a lot. Um, maybe this is going to touch some feelings around here, but our company culture used to be driven by ego. We are told that we are ninjas, hackers, whatever, that we are the best, that we are brilliant. We are good people, but when ego is, is, is so important in our kind of, you know, that making us feel special, everyone, you know, so this is how our, our jobs usually are. I mean, um, yeah. And it's also our kind of companies are always male centric. I mean, we have an extremely low amount of women, what is extremely sad, because without diversity, we don't have yeah this uh, this uh, different opinions. More facts: we love to be focused. If we are distracted, this is very bad. Related to this is the hero culture that I like to define. And, 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 and to kind of say, I mean, I, I guess all of you pull all night to finish uh, work uh, during the university times. Some of you, like, you know, have to meet a deadline and, and stay uh, probably a long time at work that it was necessary. When I see myself at the university, for example, when I was studying, I've never did this all night shift or kind of hero because, I mean, it's pointless. If you plan your work properly, yeah, you can avoid it. But it's, it's how we work, usually. We work like we have to be long hours there. I don't know the rest of Germany, but I find crazy in Berlin that this happens a lot. This, we have a lot of irregular working hours. I see a lot of my colleagues, not now, but when I moved, first moved to Germany, like starting work at 10, at 11, and staying until 8. So kind of, you know, it depends on the companies, but, but especially in the startups or at least in Berlin, we have regular uh, working hours. And last kind of fact about what we do in our job or how is our job st uh, working around, etc., is that we don't have, we are not able to generate enough interest on engineering because, you know, the, I don't, exactly, I, I don't really know the numbers in Germany, and especially Froscon is not the right place to say that because we have a lot of kids walking around here, and it's amazing. But for example, the number of people willing to go to university in Barcelona and willing to engage in, in computer science is going, is going down. And, and this is a fact that happens to all of us, and we have to think about it. Yeah. So these were kind of the 
kind of description, kind of very fast description of what we do at work and how we work. Before we move forward, I would like to think about one thing about what we do and why we do it. Is, is we define ourselves by what we do. If we ask our colleagues or we met a person for the first time, we kind of define each other, you know? You are a software engineer, you are a system administrator, both hate each other, I don't know why. Then we create DevOps, or you are a fashion designer, you know? You are on IT, you are not technical, you are technical, etc. Et it's very important. And then when we exclude or work on other things, yeah, we kind of lost this definition of ourselves. So after this kind of fast um, explanation of, of you know, what we do at work and that work it really defines ourselves, kind of short stuff um, about companies. Um, our industry and companies are extremely diverse, but usually for in all the companies, the culture is defined by the founders, by the founders. Um, I'm very lucky to work at a company that the founders decided to build distributed from the very beginning. Um, and this makes that, for example, I have colleagues working in Japan, I have colleagues working in the USA, and, and both work in the same team. But some other companies, because of fear, because of lack of trust, whatever, they want you to be in the same office. And even if it doesn't make sense for your work, they want you to stay there. There is a nice article about, from the BBS about the lack of trust on working remotely. And this really involves your daily life. Yeah? So it's important that if you are in a company and, and you do that way, yeah, um, it's important to set the right culture. Another thing that happens actually to me or that I saw a lot of times in Berlin or in Barcelona even also is, is when you build a startup and you have no money, you want to work a lot of hours, etc., etc., et and it just makes sense. Um, so taking the right amount of people to do that, it, it's, it's kind of a stuff. It's important to know, many of you, for example, might know, but working more than a given amount of hours in Germany is illegal. So it's important to know your rights here. Something that also drives me crazy about the startups is they are mission driven. Every startup has a mission. And my question is, are we going to save the world with that mission? So mm, every company has a job that get money to, you know, from customers and serve these customers. But all of this kind of helps this, this hype culture of ego when we work at a company. And last but not least, we might have different understandings of what you know, productivity means in a, in a company. And we actually have, because I'm lucky that I've worked on places that you basically got a task assigned and you were measured for, by your task and your job done. But I've been in other places that uh, long working hours and you have to be there. And, uh, and it's still important to know what kind of things you are in. Oops. Let's talk about perks or what do we get at a company. Um, I see some of you here that probably got the child at the university already, and some of you that may right after university. A lot of companies give in Berlin club mate, beer, a kicker, ping pong table. Right? I mean, I've seen very few people, very few companies being innovative on this idea on how to attract, how to, to attract people. But it's always provided or subsided, more or less, yeah. And at less in Berlin, in other areas like Jena, where I, where I used to do some work a few years ago, it's less common, but uh, host meetups, and, and that usually run after hours. So this means that you have to stay even longer there. Um, and few large companies uh, might have a daycare, but very few. Um, Talking about the culture, as I said before, not everyone is, is used to do remote working or working from home. Um, not 
quite sure about the rest of Germany, for sure, but I know Barcelona and, and it's not like this. Um, and looking for remote work actually is something that really lets you define your own piece and your own work. Um, and as I said before, the, this article from the BBC is, there is no, no such a thing as flexible work. Um, it's really, really interesting to read because um, it really tells you that we don't, do too, we don't do more remote work because we are lacking um, trust. So yeah, it's really important when you when you create a company that this is a, that is important facts. Um, the environment in companies, as I said before, um, hiring. We used to use this ninja hacker. I mean, maybe this is attracting some people, but. And this, I know this is changing because, for example, at my company, at the company that I, I work for these days, this is kind of improving. But in general, I still see a lot of ads that try to attract people uh, with this ego driving idea. And last but not least, we, are, we might not be hiring the right people at, given, at certain ages because so for some people we ask weird questions. Weird? I mean, we don't, hire women. we don't hire women at a given age because they might get pregnant. We don't hire, we don't hire men after, I don't know, 45 years because, you know, they might forget all the history behind them, you know, but they get experience. So sometimes I see this in, in, in companies and it's, it's very sad. Especially coming out of me where I like to uh, do other things, not just being a be living for my job, work-life balance is very important. So I ask myself a lot of times what companies can be do on that, on that area. Um, and most of them kind of ask me like, the same questions. How much work, how much balance? What does it mean for everyone? And I'm sure that if I ask someone here what work-life balance means, it means completely different for each one of us. For some of us, it might be like, that my company let me work on open source. For some of others, maybe that I want to do sports. I'm setting up myself for the next triathlon, or I want to to run Berlin Marathon. You know, so I don't know about every company, as I said at the beginning, but work-life balance in startups in Berlin or corporate companies in Barcelona sucks. Usually means that, for example, the typical average time that an engineer is working in Barcelona is from nine to seven with two hours break. From nine to seven, it means that if you have one hour commute, you go back at, work, at home at 9 p.m. If you have child, for example, this is no way something that scales. So just kind of a quick uh, gossip thing. Um, most of my friends, when they got child, they start working freelance for international companies in Barcelona. And that's why, because the work-life balance is not so good. So, after software, companies, a little bit about what actually having child uh, means and, and we do like regular basis. By the way, I have one and I wait another one for December. So, I'm busy and I'm going to be extremely busy in December. Um, as some of you who have child or not, I mean, having a child is, it changes everything. There are no rules applied. So, it's, and it's extremely different from one child to another one. You for, I know the history that some parents tell me that they don't sleep for a long time. I'm very lucky because after two months, my kid was sleeping eight hours. So, But sleep, it's a very challenging thing. Um, last but not least, everyone likes the way they do it, and they're extremely vocal about it. They tell you, you have to do these things that way, that other way, and you have your own ideas. Yeah. And in for sure, it's an ongoing process that you are changing every day and, and you are, don't know anything. So, yeah, it's no time to complain for further. After a while, they grow up, you feed them, and they go to kindergarten. By the way, you have to find one before. I don't know the rest of Germany, but in Berlin, it's extremely challenging. 
And in Barcelona, it's extremely more challenging. So yeah, it's a big deal after that. And they get sick. So they get sick, you get sick, you have to maybe not go to work, and you have to get them to the doctors. So this means that you have to do a lot of things. And you actually have to devote yourself to be proficient at work. You have to devote yourself to be good at home, etc., cetera, et cetera. Something that really amazed me from Germany is this picture. I see so many dads in Berlin playing with their kids in the playground, in the cafes, et cetera, et cetera. This is not imaginable in Barcelona, for example. It would be like crazy that you do that things. And that's amazing because this means that you are more involved in your kids' education, you are more involved on what they do. Um, this is less common in other places than in Germany. Um, it's one thing that everyone has to think about themselves. What do we do? Do we involve more, less, etc.? And as I said before, time management, when you get kids, it's kind of crazy. So you have less time, you have to be, time is your, it's a very scary resort. You have to be at work. And if you happen to have these timetables like we have in Barcelona from nine to seven, it's like, I'm a missing parent. Um, one thing that a very good friend of mine told me in Berlin is and what they do is they basically reduce the amount of hours they work together and they shared all the stuff that happened. So yeah, it's a very important thing. And, 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 and usually it's so happening that still women are taking all the care and all the load that what means having a child. But yeah, important thing is time. And I actually improved myself a lot uh, uh, about my, my time management skills after I got a kid because I have to. And in a natural, more or less, someone that's sitting down there kind of hide it. We discussed it once that you are as bad parent as everyone else is. And this is very important to understand from the very beginning. Um, and empathy should never be forgotten um, when you are in all this. Because empathy for work, because they need you and your teams. And empathy in your work for you that you get a sick kid, etc., cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and after kind of a few things about what parenting is, I'm gonna enter the most scary thing in areas of this, what society expectations are. I guess this happens here in Germany like it happens in Barcelona. People expect you to do things one way. For example, um, we bought for our kid, we went to this IFA show in Berlin, and we bought this ear protection stuff. Now we are going on vacation to Barcelona, and we will get this protection stuff because we're going to see fireworks and, and some kind of crazy dancing under the fireworks that we do in, in Barcelona in summer. I'm totally sure that my family will tell me and my friends will tell me, what the fuck are you doing? Are you crazy? You don't do that. Here in Germany, it's the other way around. All people in the IFA show, all, all, even the, 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 the speaker in the, in the IFA show in Berlin were telling everyone, you should protect your kids' ears because this is very loud. You know? So usually we don't do a lot of things. Sorry? We have just a few, so it's, it's easy to interact. It might be, I mean, uh, but it, I find it very nice, you know, that we get, you know, what, what, what I was trying to explain with this was that, that um, society expects you to do stuff. And, and in Barcelona are one kind of stuff, and in Berlin are completely different. Um, so, for example, um, school, school schedules are in Barcelona. You are expecting to... Uh, have your kid stay at lunch time because it's two hours and if both of you have to work and you don't have family around you, you have to do that things. And, and this is not as cheap as like in Germany. So, but you are expected to do it.
care tasks. Um, I, I guess all of you found this crazy situation like here. I, I strongly find it's that when we do all this caring stuff is usually done by women. Even if in Germany or instead, unless in Berlin, I see a lot of uh, male parents taking this thing, so getting the kid to the doctor or getting the kid to the daycare and involving in the, this kind of Eingebonen that you guys do in the daycares here in Germany. Um, and it's, it's very important that everyone is involved on these ideas, especially, yeah. Another thing that kind of drove me crazy is the differences when we access parental benefits here. Uh, usually, unless my friends in Berlin take two months out, and women take 12 months. And because men still get a lot, a lot more money. So at the end, society is forcing us, the women, to stay longer unemployed and kind of out of this equation. Computers, this doesn't work now. Um, I cannot be more strong on this sentence because it's not well, still well known. And by the way, if you wonder about this, is is an ad from the Second Republic in Spain uh, that was basically a fight between right right hand people and left hand people, and this says that the labor of a farmer is as important as the salary that. Uh, that the blue collar uh, worker gets. But here my take was that you should know your rights, enforce it, and you should also know your duties, your responsibilities. I've seen actually a couple of people done doing mutter shoots in, in Berlin, even if that's illegal. I've seen so many people done doing Eltonside, because you know, we can't just have a woman doing the whole Eltonside and we can't go back to work. Awesome, I have to go faster. Um, and there is one awesome thing that I know from Berlin or from Germany is Kinder Krakengeld. You can get money when your kid is out because you can uh, you know, get out of work too. I guess this also happens here in Berlin, but it happens a lot more in Barcelona. So my congratulations to all these grandfathers, Gross Elton, who are actually being fathers again because we have to work 12 hours a day. Strongly sad, but happens. And in, in Spain, it happens a lot. So can we do things? Yes. We can encourage remote work. We can work from home policies that are easy and that are not bullshit for people to ask for it. We can have empathy because it's probably one employee is asking to stay home because he has a sick kid, it's because he has a, a sick kid. It's not because he's lazy to come to the office. Yeah. And one very important thing is to try to think about time. About time that you, when you schedule, uh, uh, schedule your meetings. You schedule your meetings at 7 p.m. Probably I will never be there because I have, you know, like this going to bed dance that everyone has to do with the kids. And using a schedule properly, recording, planning, and asynchronous com communication helps a lot. Um, just as half a slow more time, not more time. Fear burns out. This is very important for me because one thing that can happen after you kind of put all this pressure to, to people is that they burn out. So they quit your company. They are not a happy employee anymore. So you lost an important resource that took you money to train and to be useful. And after kind of some tips, kind of very fast for, for companies, for you as a parent, I strongly hate when people try to lecture me what I have to do as a parent. So, but the only kind of thing that I will say is talk to as many people as possible because you can get awesome ideas how to deal with your time challenging, challenges. And very quick, a few numbers that from this poll that I run on the internet. So 91% male answers, 9% women, much as the industry. What else can I say? I would love to get more women, but yeah. By the way, before I forget, this is kind of thank you if 
Diana is doing, look, looking to me over the internet because thank you to Diana Gunther. Basically, she was the master of disaster spreading this, this uh, poll over the internet. And thank you to her, kind of 350 people entered this, this, this stuff. Mostly centered around Germany with 56%, uh, 11% uh, from Spain and 7% and from USA. From USA, this means like Germany is good, Spain is bad, and USA is worst. So you get a bit of everything here. Questions about if you took parental leave for how long? The average between one month and six months. Um, you can kind of say here that we kind of put a lot more options, but it basically matches my feeling that most of men takes between uh, zero and two months of absence. Um, if you took parental leave, also your partners took parental leave, I'm kind of worried about this 40% here. Because if most of this is men, this means that women never took any parental leave. Interesting. Um, if your partner took parental leave for how long? This basically shows this 70% of women, that everyone who answers this was a male. Um, When going back to work, have you asked to work less hours? Yes, both. 70%, awesome. It's very interesting when both can reduce hours because both are not ex excluded to work to work. Yes, only me, 11%, mostly I guess. A few men and all the women, and no, 72%. Interesting number from this is if you get family nearby or not. I mean, I live in Berlin. My family is 108 and 1,800 kilometers away. So, you know, it gets challenging. But nearly 62% uh, of people got family nearby somehow. Work environments, kids being kids friendly. An amazing 65%. Should be even more, but it's good. I wonder if it's actually this number is because most of my colleagues answer from Elastic. <laughs> um, employees having remote or work from home policy. Nearly 74%, what is amazing. Um, we all should have this kind of policies, as we will see later. Access to daycare benefits. 80% of no. Why if it's so challenging? Um, and one thing that I did is I put a, a free text stuff so people can write whatever they want and stuff that they wrote that is very well done is flexibility, remote work, and work from home easy, and kids welcome at work. So if you have a company or have a boss or, a or a, you are in a management position, doing stuff like this helps that your employees keep happy and don't burn out and actually quit. What can be improved, a company or a connected daycare? I always wonder, why if we get people with child, and this is a complicated thing, you, you, don't even, you don't have to get a daycare like, for example, Idealo did in Berlin. You actually can call your daycare nearby and say, okay, can we make a kind of deal with you? You have happy fathers and mothers who will come back to work and will be calmed down because their kid is actually in a good daycare. Um, it's actually this second one is very interesting. The human bane comes after the business revenue. Even if we are doing business, we are dealing with humans. So when we forget that, and especially in Spain, it's strongly forgotten, we are, I mean, we are not good. Um, and one that is very interesting to me at last, and I got a lot of discussions with everyone, is that... Um, Sometimes kid is not so unhealthy to go, uh, you know, to stay, don't, don't stay sleeping and then still moving around, but he's not good enough, healthy enough to go to take care. So having a room, whatever, that you can actually, like here, here we got this elder and un, un, unkind uh, Arbeitsa uh, plants uh, that where they have the daycare things for the conference. And it's awesome. It can work and your kid can be happy. 
Um, some more pearls from it. Tell me anything. Why moms need to change their schedule and not dads? It's really sad, but happened. The default assumption seems to be full-time young male engineers. Why do we accept that women reduce time, but male engineers not? Something that really amazes me to me is Quebec have a strong maternity plan close to the German one. If it, even if it's North America, it's kind of super good. And last, um, I really want to share this because it's extremely important. Is the management, my team and company were not as understanding. It was amazingly stressful and difficult. I often wonder if my, I often wonder if I would have been a better parent and my child would have had a stronger start if I worked for my current employee then. Humans realizing that is still me sad. So if you are actually in a position to change stuff, do it. Or if you can talk to your employee or management, whatever, do it. It's extremely important. Just quite co quick numbers about from the statistics agency. Usually the, in Germany, you get 1.5 childs, even we get less in Barcelona. And just to wrap up and finish, we all have been kids who have been parents who have been stressed. I don't want to see more parents who are stressed by having kids because it's kind of a common responsibility. Because at the end of the day, who's going to pay our pensions? Our kids. Um, yeah, so it's very important. And I stopped talking. <laughs> 39 minutes was kind of good. First of all, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. <laughs> and I'm here to take questions. I don't have prizes of my colleague. She got all, everything for her questions. No questions? Even comments. I mean, it's time to, the, to see if this actually makes you sad or not. Because it makes me sad. And I want to change the stuff, so that's why I actually wanted to do this, this presentation. Um, do you think it's uh, distractive to have uh, your kids close to your workplace? It is. And how do you deal with that? Uh, I have actually have another room for him to play at home. I'm, I'm working, uh, in, uh, we have an office in Berlin, but uh, I used to work from home a lot of times. Basically have a, a room for him and a room for me. But it makes sense that it's distracting, it makes sense that it's challenging. Um, my whole story here is try to improve it because it's stressful and you might actually lose talent in order to uh, when you do that thing. Yeah. Anything else? No question. Oh, you all were sleeping. No. It was just a time, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still around uh, yes. this afternoon, at the probably at the Elastics uh, booth. I'm gonna be around. If you see one child that actually screams a lot, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's easy to figure out. So thank once you. again, thank you very much.